Now, again, it's the same story, right, that we had earlier. You can select multiple images here. The border that you see here is that they're selected. You can use your control key to select more than one, such as I picked those three. You know, I, I mentioned your display, the fit, and so on. I'm going to fit this because I want to add one more image to this because I want to talk about ordering these, and then we'll move on to the the uh, display uh, planes. So to start off with, I wanna attach an image. So I'm gonna go back to attach and raster. And remember I attached one with the blue roofs, right? That was the image from 2006. We're gonna attach it. Now it's not gonna overlay exactly at the same place these three do, but I wanna integrate that into my scene here. So. Uh, same thing, you know, I've set all the settings, so I don't need to change anything. I'm just going to hit attach and you'll see it ends up exactly where it should. Right. But there's a couple issues with it. Right. One, it overlays the other geometry. That's one. Two, the contrast and brightness is different. It's not ordered correctly. If I look, there's the list. You can see the list. There's the second image, the third image. All the way at the bottom is this one. Why is that? Well, MicroStation does first in, right? These are the images that were first attached all the way down to the last image that you see here. These can be reordered. So for example, that image can be selected and I can say, all right, let's take that and let's, let's send that to the back. Now you can see that the other images overlap over the top of it but these can be kind of like leaved together, almost like pages in a book, right? So you've got images such as, you know, this first one that's out there. Let me pick the edge of it because my preferences, right? My preferences were set so I can't just click in the middle to select the image. I got to click right on the edge. Same thing applies. I can see the name right here as well. And now I've got the first one. There's the second one. There's the third image. And I want that to be on top of this image, but I want it to be underneath that image. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to do this sort of the long way. I can drag and drop these if I want to, but I also can just say, all right, I don't want to bring it to the front or send it all the way to the back. And by the way, bring it to the front just does exactly that. It brings it to the bottom, in this case, of the list. It was just like I had just attached it a moment ago. And again, send to the back, pushes it all the way back. There it is at the top of the list now. And now I can say, well, all right, let's bring this forward one. If I bring it forward one, you don't see anything really happen, but where does it end up? There, that image, and this one sits on top, but it's still underneath these two images, right? So what do we do from there? Let's bring it forward one more time. Now, if you take a look at it, where does it sit? It sits between the second and the third image that is out there. Okay, so that sort of takes care of, you know, you can manipulate these around within the group. You can bring them to the front, send them to the back, you know, do whatever you need to do as far as ordering these around. You can also right click on it like I have here. But you can do a couple other things with this. And that would be, you'll notice when you look at this image, let me zoom in so you can see it. It doesn't look the same. You know, if you were to print this out, there would be a stark difference between these two images, right? So that's where some of the uh, tools like contrast and brightness come in. So now that I've got them sort of laying in the, the planes that I want it, and we're going to talk about planes in a second, but this is in the background plane, we're going to take this and say, let's try to get it to match the other two that are there. So we have contrast and brightness options. We can come in here, making sure we have the right image selected and say, well, you know, this won't be exact, but I'm just going to give it a, some values here to play around with it. And let's make that negative 20 or something. That gets it close. So let's say now I'm happy with that, right? It sort of matches the other images that are there. But if we zoom in on this, right? If we take a look at this image here and just kind of zoom in, you notice there's a big difference between these two images. One, you can see it when you glance at it that this image and that image have look like they're different resolutions, right? They don't, just don't look right. Different scales. Well, a quick way, obviously, you can visually check it like you did here. 
But there's another way, and that is, do you all see this icon right here? This is sort of the quick information. The quick information, if you just linger your cursor over the top of it, will tell you some information about the image itself, what the origin is. Um, more importantly, it tells me that the scale in this case is 1 to 3600. It's 300 DPI. So keep those numbers in mind, 3600 and 300 DPI. If I look at the others, you'll see, yeah, it's still 300 DPI. Wait, they are the same pixel size, but notice the scale factor. So what do you have going on? Well, you really can tell when you look at, for example, if I take, uh, let's take that image here. Let's just move that back, right? So I'm going to send that back. And let's go look at a good spot might be right down in here, probably, to tell. There's a good example right here when I zoom in. Yeah, this will work. If we zoom in and we take a real good look at those two images, it really stands out, right? These are you know, dependent on screen, the zoom factor, if you will. If you take a look at the right side that's there, these pixels are half size to what you see on the left side, okay? So we know that it's at a lower resolution, still the same scale, but certainly a lower resolution. Now, there are some things that you can do to take a look at these images, for example, and it took a moment for that to kind of come in. If we zoom back out, we've got some tools that will help find you what that optimal resolution is for the screen itself. We've got a tool right here called One to One. Do y'all see that one right here? This tool right here, the way it's designed to work, you'd select the tool, and if you move your cursor over the top of, you can see as I move my cursor around, I can select the different images that are there. I'm gonna pick this one-to-one. -one. Let's pick the image actually that I need. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a data point on the image itself, and I'll give a data point to tell it where I wanna have it zoom into. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me the best possible you know, viewing for it. It's one-to-one. -one. It's basically matching, in this case, matching one pixel in the aerial photo, the photo itself, to one pixel in the display resolution. So this gives you that best possible viewing of the image. And for example, if I was to zoom in, and you know that's going to make the individual pixels look a little bit larger, so they're going to be scaled, and it's going to make it look grainy, or it's pixelated, if you will. If I zoom out, well, I'm looking at this at a lower resolution than it really needs to be. So this gives me what that best resolution is for that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.